we're good. I'm assuming yes. Thanks, everyone. And and again, I just want to thank uh, thanks to Robert for the invitation. And uh, I also want to thank all of our Boeing teammates for their presentations through the week uh, and just uh, the focus on these topics. So thank you all. Um, I think one thing that we, you know we can all say across all of our industries. Um, we, we've seen from employee situation and attrition rates have increased over the last couple of years, um, very much so this year. Uh, and you know the overall competitive landscape for attracting and retaining employees is very different than two years ago. Um, this year fe feels very different, and the data supports that. And and as a leader at Boeing, you know I this is very front and center for me, and just did my day to day job. And I've been thinking about. Um, the experience of working at a company and and what factors influence that experience working at a company. Um, so when I was asked to talk with you all this morning, um, this is something I wanted to explore. I wanted to explore how engineering systems, how our teammates input data, how we manage data, how that all influences the daily experience of doing your work. Um, uh, you know, and I, and I believe, you know, when I think about that experience, um, being a leader at Boeing, you know, I feel like it really contributes, your daily experience contributes towards the way we view ourselves as, as seeking to be the most sad after, sought after place to work. So um, we will uh, flip through it here. I have to remember I have my slides. So maybe just a brief introduction. Um, you know, this year's my 20, 20 year anniversary working at Boeing. Um, uh, you know, I have degrees in mechanical engineering, uh, a master's degree in business administration and engineering management. Um, while at Boeing the last 20 years, uh, I've been a design engineer, primarily in the interior design of our aircraft. Since then, I've man managed organizations, again, in interiors engineering, production engineering, and materials and process engineering. And what, one of the things relevant to maybe this topic, thinking back to for many years, I was one of the leaders on our 747-8 development program. And, you know, the interesting data point when I saw through that journey and our teams doing their work, there were definitely situations where teams were building out and developing um, requirements for data on our designs. And, and sometimes it was just solely based on the ability that our computing infrastructure could handle more data. And it wasn't necessarily around the value that we needed different data or new data for our designs. And, and that kind of has always struck with me over the last several years. Uh, today, I'm the vice president of our engineering functions organization at Boeing Commercial Airplanes. Uh, my, my duties um, really around the development oversight of our overall engineering workforce. Um, and very much a part of that is assessing everyone's experience and empowering them to be the best that they can be. So I, I wanted to just take a moment and explore this. And uh, even if you want to contribute in your chat window, um, just think for a minute about what brings you joy at work. You know, and, and this is something I talk with my employees a lot about. When you're driving to work or you're logging on in the morning or you're ending your day, what about your day has brought you joy? Um, and if you can expand on that, think about that experience of your day. And um, what are the factors that influence your daily experience of doing work? And these factors are obviously very diverse. Um, and if I think about my 20 years at Boeing, um, those factors that influence my experience um, change over the years. Uh, different, different situations personally, you know, uh, Early in my career, I was single, and now you know I'm raising a family. So my the, the 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 factors that contribute to my experience evolve over over time. And so what one thing that I think then is relevant to this conversation is, um, you know, I I do think in in talking with um, many of our, my teammates that how you're asked to do your work, um, how you exchange and share data with your teammates. Um, the efficiency and the processes of how everyone uh, contributes to that data and design, utilizing the systems, the tools that you're asked to use um, every day to do that work. Um, my belief is that that for sure contributes to your daily experience. And 
Um, when I think about early in my career doing design work, um, what brought me joy in my work was that, that every day working with other engineers, mechanics who build our aircraft, and um, collaborating on designs or improving designs or improving the manufacturability of our products, that's what brought me joy. Um, having to sit down at my desk then to answer to enter data was just a part of the job, but that wasn't the part of job that that really inspired me, and it was just something that you had to do. So I wanted I want to explore a little bit about what what I found just looking kind of across the industry and some research that, that I think um, maybe builds this case. So one, one uh, great report that I found from the World Economic Forum, um, specifically on people strategies related to the fourth industrial revolution, uh, and, and you can read um, all the dimensions on this white paper here on the screen, but th these are the dimensions that the white paper argues um, influence an employee's experience. And, and you know, these all resonate with me, and these are, I. I you know, these are all really areas that were focused uh, at Boeing. You know, but the one that I want to highlight in the bottom, which again is very broad, but um, you know, how our employees work within an environment that supports productivity and performance. And um, this really re resonated with me when I was thinking through this presentation. You know, when you think about uh, traditional development of design work and exchanging data, um, when I think through my my career, you know, a lot of that is is built off of uh, and designed through a series of handoffs across employees and across teams. And as one of um, my engineers told me recently that I thought was really insightful is that this leads to a culture around data exchange. And um, I was really kind of taken back by the the way that she said that. And you know, we, we want a culture around impact and the outcome of the work that we do. Um, you know, we, we, wanna, we don't wanna have a culture, right, that focuses on data exchange. It's really the, the outcome of our work that we wanna be focused on. Um, so I think that obviously leads directly to productivity. And I really think that this speaks to the future that we all envision around the future of our design work that we do is really around co-development and co-development in real time. And that in, inherently should influence productivity, and, it, and I would argue, and then influence everyone's experience every day doing work. Another, another um, uh, a group of research that I came across that I think um, really highlights some of this is a recent study that was published in the Harvard Business Review. In this study, uh, a company, an organization called Citrix, conducted a study that was called the Talent Excel Accelerator. And this was a year-long examination of global work patterns and plans um, and, how, and designs around how to understand uh, how work will change. Um, this research was conducted across 2,000 knowledge workers across many different um, industries and um, large corporations. And again, when reading through this, it really connected with me across these three different elements. Um, you know, employees are seeking, uh, you know, flexibility in, in their environment and options about how and where they do their work. Um, employees want to work with a diverse team. Um, these, are, these are two large focus areas for us and I think many um, big companies. Um, but again, look at number three, you know, employees want to be, they want to rethink about how their productivity is measured. And, and again, you know, this, this talks about employees want to be valued and measured on the outcome of their work, right? And the impact that their work makes and not the output. And again, I really think that this leads us to continue to think critically about what is that kind of um, minimum and sufficient amount of data in exchange and working across teams that's needed to really bring our designs and products to light. And um, we sometimes use a saying around minimum and sufficient, but it's really intended to drive a mindset around thinking critically about the data that we input and what is the value that that uh, element is bringing, right, to the bigger bigger system. So I just I found these I found these studies really interesting. 
so I, I think just to then kind of bring it now back a little bit, kind of the, the day to day here at work at Boeing, and you know, just to I, I you know, I I think hopefully I'll share with you nothing that maybe is very new, just about our company, you know. But I think first of all, continue to focus on our purpose. You know, what is it that we do, right? Our purpose is protecting and connecting, exploring um, the globe, and um, I very much will believe that. Um, how we enable our teams to work globally will be a competitive advantage, not just getting our work done, but it'll be a competitive advantage because people will want to work to do that work efficiently. So, you know, just to expand on, on the Boeing company, um, we have lots of different product lines across many, many different parts of the aerospace industry. But, you know, I think for me, where this really brings home is just the, I, I think about the scale and scope at Boeing. And, um, you know, you can read through some of these, you know, the data on the screen, but for me, it's really these last two categories, right? We have a, a vast supply chain and we have, a, you know, a large group of employees that are spread across the globe. And so if you think about the number of touch points that go on every day across our employees and our teams and our suppliers, as we seek efficiency, um, in those numbers of all those touch points, they really they really have an exponential impact. So um, in any one area, if we can evaluate or reduce um, uh, data that is needed in our work, or do it in a more collaborative, real-time fashion, it's going to have an exponential impact on our business. And again, I think I think this will bring joy to our employees the more that we can continue to do that. So I, I, w one of our product lines that I wanted to highlight that, that really speaks to some of this is um, really, really again, talking about the research that we talked about and driving towards a culture that's focused on outcomes and impact versus exchanging data and the, and the volume and the, uh, of that data. Um, uh, we have a, a new product that we're manufacturing as we speak. Uh, it's the T7A Red Hawk. This is a um, a trainer across many different government uh, agencies and, and lines of military service. Um, and uh, this is an airplane that we're currently producing right now. And this airplane, one of the missions of this whole development wasn't necessarily just on the product, but it was equally amongst on how we do this development and design work and driving towards a more model-based systems engineering approach um, towards towards our design and towards how the data is created and consumed. And ultimately, the vision is reducing handoffs and increasing the quality of that work. Um, you know, some of, the, some of the information that we've published on this program is we've seen a significant increase in just first-time engineering quality, where the engineering work that we produced was of first-time quality right out of the gate. Um, but at the end of the day, what's even more impactful is it, that that engineering data is only of value when it comes time to build something. And um, just earlier this year, um, this airplane comes together really in two large sections of the fuselage. Uh, one section has, is, is designed and built by Boeing and the other section is designed and built by Saab. And earlier this year, those two sections were joined and I think everyone across our company, especially on this program, was overjoyed in the success of how this aircraft is now being manufactured. And across the board, from, from all of our measures around um, taking less time to join, um, we've seen um, significantly increased quality. Um, you know, this is ultimately a measure of output. Um, with, with going towards a model-based system engineering approach, going towards a more efficient approach to what data is needed in our engineering and who inputs that data. I mean, this is one of the benefits that um, we can assemble our products um, much more efficiently. And for those of us that have worked close to production systems, I can tell you that this absolutely will bring more joy to all of us on a daily basis and very much improve your experience of doing your work every day when our products are easily assembled every day. Um, 
you know, th this influences all of our experience. So I wanted to share this story with you. The, the other thing um, that I wanted to share is maybe really specific around just our, our, our engineering teams and the work that they have to do. Um, so, you know, when our, when our engineers and designers, you know, come to the point where they, we have to start really building out um, this work digitally, uh, you know, our teammates have to sit down and input data and attributes on the design and parts. Um, and, you know, we, we're, we work with a different, um, we have le our legacy systems, we have uh, no, more modern systems focused on some of our new programs. And, you know, what's been interesting is over the years as we introduce some of our new systems um, that, that really bring new integrated functionality um, that is intended to then add value that I just actually talked about on the T7 program. But what we've seen is an immediate request to um, include and add more part attribute data on that part. And um, it's not so much that the data does not, uh, is not a value, but it's really the way that we've designed it um, more recently is that it requires a single individual to do all that work. And um, we're, we are really seeking efficiencies about getting the right individual real time in a co-development um, environment to input the data and may not reside on one person to do that work. Um, we do have some examples now over time where we're focused on efficiency and um, really reducing the time needed to input data and we have some um, experiences now where we're you know uh, you know decreasing the time to do that work you know you know around 50 percent and so we will continue to seek those efficiencies of making sure the data is a value, making sure that the right person's doing it at the right time, and ultimately how that reduces the overall flow of doing the work. So this is something that we continue to strive for and we continue to find uh, those opportunities. So I, I think you know one of the exciting things just to speak to all of you in, in, in your different fields and different businesses, but you know, I would ask to think, just think and have a mindset around the, the, the systems that we build, the requirements for what data to be inputted, how that data is managed. Um, just appreciate that that influences so many people's daily experiences of doing their work. And so the questions that I would encourage all of us to continue to think about is, um, is there a future where this is actually a competitive advantage, um, not just in the data, but is there a competitive advantage to the employees of wanting to do uh, that work? Um, is there a future where people um, really get excited by not just what they're designing, not what this they're building, but are they really excited about how they do their work? Um, and, and I think about a future where when we recruit new teammates, we don't talk just about the amazing products that we design and build, but we actually also talk about um, how we do that work, how we do that work globally, and how fun and exciting it is on how we do their work. Um, and could all that really impact uh, our experience every day in a positive way? So thank you all, and I'm um, really excited just to have this opportunity to, to talk with you all, and. Um, of course, happy to uh, answer any questions. All right, so we have about 20 minutes for questions. Well, I'll go ahead and start off. Um, ben, what, what feedback have you received from your engineers regarding how the business tools that they use affect their day to day at work. Yeah. And, and I think that's John. Thanks, John. And thanks for yes. helping organize all this as well. Um, well, I think, you know, I, I kind of talked about this a little earlier. I, I do remember and think through when I started as an engineer, you know, what really brought me joy every day. And, um, you know, honestly, it was co the collaborating with all my teammates across different functions and doing the design work, right? It's collaboratively standing at the airplane, it's collaboratively standing in front of whiteboards. Um, 
uh, but but then the process to sit down and you know in front of the computer was just was just an element of having to do your work. Um, uh, and I think that the feedback that that I hear right from engineers is as they design new tools that are really those tools um, on the computer that are now part of that collaboration, right? So it's it might not just be standing in front of the airplane. It might not be standing in front of the whiteboard. It might be collaborating with your team arts teammates now electronically and in a digital environment. But I, with the stories that I hear are the more that that can come together in a collaborative environment. You know, that's what that's what teammates. That's what brings them joy. And um, it's it's not a necessity of having to input the data. It's that utilizing those tools with your teammates around the world is a part of the collaboration, right? And that's how the data is created. So um, those are the stories that I connect with as we as we develop new tools and systems. Um, when engineers come forward, it's those tools that they're excited about. And and I'll give a plug, right, for um, uh, Nick Van Schoenhoven after me, I think is giving a presentation on one of our tools um, that I think really speaks to this here today. All right, so we have uh, one in the chat window here, and it happens to be exactly what I was thinking to respond to the question you have, but I'll read uh, from Cheryl. Um, how has COVID-19, the restrictions that have been in place, impacted the premise of an employee's joy at work, especially given that collaboration in person has been limited? Yeah, I, I think this is great. I mean, there, there's many different um, aspects of our situation of work, I think, that we're all going through right now. And I think, and I, kind of going back earlier, it's the factors that contribute to your experience of what you do every day. Um, many of those factors have been influenced through the pandemic. Um, but again, for some different than others. Um, and so when I think through some of those stories, you know, those in, those uh, teammates that enjoy collaborating in a factory environment next to the airplane, um, trying to continue to find ways to do that, right? Um, and early on the pandemic, that was challenging um, as we really were all working from home. Um, so I think, I think about that. I, I also think about though that, um, you know, I've, as, as big companies like Boeing have continued to develop our global capability, um, you know, the one thing that we ex experienced through the pandemic is um, seeing how we all work collaboratively in this virtual and global environment. And um, in some cases, we, we've been very successful. Um, and the pandemic kind of highlighted that because we, we're all right out of the gate <laughs> having to work very virtual and global together. So I, I do think that there's a lot of interesting lessons that we're learning. Um, uh, as we aspire to be a global corporation and how we work collaboratively, knowing that we're not sitting next to each other, um, I think it's given us some acceleration around those tools to better enable that. And I, I think that's gonna be very positive for us in the long run. So th those are some of the things that come to mind. Okay, here comes another question. Does Boeing solicit feedback from the employees to improve how they do their work? What form does it take and how is the feedback used? Well, we have, a, I would say a couple different um, forums. Uh, you know, one, one of the behaviors that um, we really aspire to and, um, you know, really, really work on with our team is just a, a speak up culture, right? And, you know, having a have continue to improve and um, really build into the overall company, having a speak up culture has great impact across the board. Um, it could be around um, the safety of our products, the safety of building our products, and making sure we have all of that input out, you know, in front of us. It could be on um, having that culture should be better enable all of us to speak up and share ideas about what we think we could do differently and what's working really well. So broadly and culturally, um, we are continuing to focus on just that mindset within the company. Um, we have some tools that we've 
flowed out this year that um, enables teams to come together and really listen to each other. Um, that um, really continues to embody that culture that I was talking about of having a speak up culture. And then I think in more specific areas around our system design um, and our data systems, we have more technical forums that facilitate that um, the, the design of those systems, et cetera. Especially in our environment now, we're continuing to look ahead, you know, in front of us and we, what we want to look like in the future. So we we have technical forums that are designed um, to, you know, collect that input as well. All right, let me check the chat some more. Uh, here's another question. What kind of changes would need to be made to the business tools to make them a positive recruiting tool for a new talent? Well, I, you know, I, um, maybe just the way that's um, just to think about this. So um, we all have smartphones. Um, I think about the things that we are required to do with our smart smartphones, right? Um, uh, what applications do we have to, you know, do we have to go use to go do something, right? Or what, what's our banking app on our phone? How easy is it to uh, take a picture of a check and deposit it? And that's the way I kind of think about it. I think if we all think about our smartphone and the applications we use on our smartphone, I'm willing to bet that we all, we all know some of those applications that are just a pain to use, but we have to use them. And there's other applications on our phone that um, <laughs> whether or not we appreciate it, we probably really enjoy using. Uh, and it's something maybe you do every day. And if you think about it, it's like, is this bringing me joy? Like this is something that I'm enjoying to use in the, in the way that the application is designed. And, um, and I can think through those experience, I can think through those things. Um, and I can think through tools that I've had to use at work where um, I've had to use it. And some of them were painful to use and some of them were really excellent. And actually, I'd argue even gave me value and data on how I did my work every day. So um, I, I guess that's the way I think about it is when you have to go use an application, um, is it gonna bring you joy? Is it gonna present and give you data and really delight you and you weren't even expecting it. And I think we could probably all through think through those examples, but um, as somebody who hires engineering and technical uh, you know, employees, um, I, I seek those opportunities to talk about those applications that bring us joy at work and bring us joy at how we work together. You know, and I, we have some stories that I share with uh, new recruits, but I'm continuing to try to look for some more and more of those because, you know, at Boeing, um, we traditionally talk about our products and how we build them um, as, as fascinating as it is that we all do in the aerospace industry. Um, but I, I continue to find those other elements of the daily experience at work too to talk about. All right. And we have another question. What are some lessons learned from transitioning to model-based that you would approach differently if you had the chance to do it again? I think two things come to mind. Um, and I even think through over here are the last, you know, even 10 years at Boeing. Um, I think some of our aspirations of model-based or relational design, um, you know, I think there's some examples where we still really haven't capitalized on that vision, meaning um, the tools may be capable of doing some great new model-based work, uh, but maybe our employees haven't really kind of mentally grasped that aspiration. So, it, you know, it potentially is both a training, um, you know, maybe a training improvement area, or just that vision of, in this case, maybe relational design and what it what it brings um, and what value it brings. So I think about that, that the training and the mindset about really um, thinking about the future differently. That's one aspect. The, the other one that I briefly touched on when I first started the presentation is, um, I think whether it's model-based design work or um, 
you know, increasing computing capabilities. As we, as we think through that and develop these new capabilities, um, I think inherently culturally, there tends to be then, a, uh, in some cases, gravitating to wanting to do more data. <laughs> um, and um, I think we always uh, need to continue to focus on it and, and think about, but is that data needed? Um, do, do we need, when we think about the aircraft, um, do we need to think about the aircraft in a, in a higher fidelity resolution of data? Does that really bring value? Does it add value? And I, I think that's where we're always faced with. So as, as we have more computing uh, capability, more model-based systems approaches to doing work, we, we need to ensure that we're doing it in the right, in the right ways, in the right you know, value. So I, I've seen those situations too, where we've had to kind of question something and step back. Um, do, do we really need to do that work? Do we really need that, that, that amount of data on something? Okay. We have about 10 minutes left. We have another question. How does Boeing work to improve collaboration across traditional job roles, engineering, production, et cetera? Yeah, that, that's uh, really good. I, you know, as I think through my kind of examples of it, um, I like us all to think about not our job roles and you know what's not our job role, what's the data we create in our job role, but the more that you know cross-functional team can really think about the end outcome, um, I think I think is beneficial, and I think it allows the team to kind of go back to what I said earlier, really make sure we're doing the right work and it adds value. Um, you know, on one of our recent development programs, um, uh, we used to talk about the airplane's the boss. <laughs> you know, we'd, we'd say, the airplane's the boss. Um, all that we do, all that we do is influencing that aircraft, um, you know, in, the, in the, how we build it and how we assemble it. So I really appreciate and when talking with teams that are cross-functional, more have, making sure the team's all thinking about that single output, the single boss of the aircraft, um, should enable them to think critically about the work that they do and making sure that it's, it's all needed um, and all having kind of that unity of mission. So I know that's the first thing that really comes to mind in this question is, is making sure that's really clear. Um, I, I think after that, there's probably many examples about, um, you know, collaborative tools, how, how teams collaborate together. Um, uh, we all across our industries have different approaches to doing uh, value stream map exercises, and there's all these different tools to really bring and engage teams, but the unity of mission, um, I think, needs to be really clear. All right. I'm told we have some more questions in the question panel, but I cannot see that. So I've asked Cheryl to ask them for me. Okay, John. Um, yes, we do have quite a few questions that have been uh, waiting up and some of them are long. So if you need me, Ben, to repeat them, I'll be very, very happy to do so. Okay, um, the first question, um, this is a shorter one. What is the biggest obstacle at Boeing to achieve a more collaboration-friendly environment? And the person also added, this is a cultural shift too. That was a comment to the question. Sure. I, you know, I, um, I do think, um, you know, one of the things that we talk about is, um, can, you know, in, inherently, and I'm, a, I'm, I'm, you know, there's great collaboration that comes out of working with people physically face to face. And um, I think early in my career, the other thing that I appreciated is that one of the outcomes of that is you build relationships with each other that you just, you don't really, you kind of take for granted when you're doing the work, but you realize that you got to know somebody really well through an experience. Um, and, and so I think we think about how can that, how can both um, great work get done and how can great relationships get built um, um, you know virtually and globally so I think it's you know it's not something that's an impediment but I think it's something that 
we were focused on about how can all that happen both in a physical and in a virtual environment. And um, I think we're thinking about new tools to enable that, et cetera. But that's that's what I think about. I think it's, you know, I think we've probably got a good approach to getting the work done collaboratively and virtually and globally. But I just want to make sure that relationships are continuing to get built at the same time, right? And um, so that's, I guess, something on my mind about how we continue to seek to do that going forward. Yeah, relationship is just so important. Um, next question. What are you doing to ensure employees are not blocked by direct managers to getting positions that help the company as a whole versus a given program? Wow, can you read that question again? Yeah. What are you doing to ensure that employees are not blocked by direct managers to getting to positions that help a company as a whole versus a given program? Huh. That's good. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I guess what I think about is, I mean, there's there's probably more to this question. There's probably different situations that I think contribute. But I think I, I talked earlier about, um, you know, continuing to aspire in our organizations around having a, a, a speak up and open um, culture. Right. And I think, um, you know, continue to find ways to do that is really important. Um, you know, I think presenting in, in to many people and not just the manager, but presenting to many people about your ideas, right? And how you think they contribute to the, the bigger company, um, I think is important. So those, I don't know, those are the, some of the things that come to mind. Thanks, Ben, for that answer. Um, this is the longer of the questions. Um, so here we go. What was the survey feedback regarding the quality of an employee's management and respect for them in their decision-making process, judgment, working together and respect for employees and how can the digital thread and availability of correct data increase the speed of making good decisions and judgment in your opinion well and i don't well, there was a comment about survey i don't have any survey data um i, I think i think that question is just alluding that the question that was asked i mean um again i think it just goes back to finding ways to improve the experience of an employee doing their work with their manager and their coworkers. I mean, this is all value. The, the second part of that question around just the digital thread, I mean, absolutely the digital thread is, is meant to increase quality and efficiency. And, but, and we talk about that. I'm sure we talk about that across industries. Um, but I, I argue that that digital thread is gonna increase our joy and our daily experience of doing our work. Um, as a de design engineer, if I can design something virtually and immediately simulate how the product is going to get assembled and manufactured all real time, um, that is super powerful. And as a design engineer, to be able to do that real time, um, you know, it's 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 uh, it's kind of like instant gratification. You're going to see your work in a simulated environment and building an aircraft. Um, I think that'd be just fascinating. I, I wish, you know, I wish I would have had all this technology when I entered my career, but um, so that's a little bit, I guess, about the digital thread. Thanks, Ben. I'm going to hand this back to John. I've, we've dealt with all the questions that are in the question panel and it looks like we're pretty much at time. All right. Thanks, Cheryl. So, uh, we're wrapping up the questions. Thanks everyone for participating uh, and asking questions. Thank you, Ben, for your presentation. It was a, a nice discussion and um, thought provoking. You know, you keep m mentioning joy and joy is not really measurable except for the individual. And so uh, I imagine pulling statistics together on individual joy felt is challenging. But it's also refreshing to hear someone at the vice president level concerned with an individual's joy of doing their work. So that's encouraging. Uh, any last comments? No, I th thank you again, John and Robert, and um, just the whole facilitation of this exercise and everyone across the industries to contribute to it. Just really, really proud to be a part of it. So thank you very much. All right, thank you.